Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IPFS Implementer Sync for Thursday, November 10th. Uh, in my local time, it's 1.05 p.m. I do not know the Greenwich Mean Time off the top of my head, but it's a lovely day. Um, we have a couple of things on the agenda today. Uh, wait, uh, aside from our usual, we have, what's going on in this meeting? What am I missing? Uh, I guess we can kick it off with this first discussion. Lyle, do you want to get right into the um, multi-codec governance? Yeah, so it's something I, I started noticing patterns of problems, which are, uh, I try to like provide, provide a digest under this bullet point on our agenda. Uh, I think the gist is that we have a single point of, uh, single source of truth, uh, about codecs across our stack. And by that, I mean IPFS, IPLD, lip 2 p uh, you name it. Uh, it lives in multi-codec uh, multi org in multi-codec repo. There's a table CSV file, and it's essentially a table of uh, numeric codes uh, across the stack and their meaning. And historically, my understanding of why we have this table was that Across our stack, if there's an, an enum, a numeric code, it should have a single meaning. There should be no ambiguity that, oh, it, what's the context of this message? Uh, like you should, there should be only one meaning of the code. Um, that being said, codes are just numbers. Uh, each code has a name. And I've seen uh, potential problems over and over around people thinking that the name is set in stone the same way the numeric code is. And over and over, that's not been a, the true. And to back that claim, three examples from the top of my head, uh, you can like dig into the details. Long story short, we had either invalid mappings from no names to codes, or we changed the name for a code. Um, and that's like an open problem I see over and over because we, some people assume that entire table is set in stone. Some people assume only codes are ossified and you can rename them at a, at a whim. For example, the P2P team considers renaming quick a protocol from slash quick to something else. And, and a link to the discussion there, like uh, suggesting, hey, this would break everyone <laughs> using this like the, the, the human readable version. For example, Kubo, uh, the DNS TXT records with multi others for bootstrappers, or if people have set up peering agreements between the gateways or their own hosting providers, and they use Quick because it's like better with hole punching and other stuff. So. That context being said, uh, I think like the general thing I wanted to, like, I don't think, I don't, I'm not suggesting we, like we need to find an answer, but kind of like flagging there's a problem. And I feel this group should at least like discuss or try over, over this and maybe like follow up meetings, maybe take a look at the examples I provided. I think that will be useful for people to maybe take time asynchronously to understand the scope of the problem and we can maybe like figure out uh, solutions uh, next time we talk but i feel we have like a governance problem around this table so in general when people suggest adding new codes and we don't have clear po written policy like what like what are the criteria do we accept every co like content type people invent and then the, it's abundant and we need to live with them and another thing is like what's actually ossified what's the policy around naming. Uh, so that's like the context and I'm like open, Brendan, to your idea how to handle that. That's fantastic. And actually I'm delighted that Robin is joining us at the perfect timing. We are talking about um, governance of multi-codex. Robin, I, I, I have been in a discussion with you around some work at the IETF um, as a separate adjacent project. Do you think you could give some light on that just to help round out this discussion? Um, I mean, very, very briefly, since I'm I literally just like cr crash landing in, into this meeting. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you for those I haven't met yet. Um, so, I mean, basically, 
the 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 only context there is so far is that we're looking at uh, getting uh, IETF endorsement for multi-formats work in the IETF. And the way that is done is generally by having a discussion on the dispatch list. The dispatch list is called um, that way because it is sort of like the input funnel for IETF work. Um, basically, you bring stuff there and they tell you, no, this is not the right place, or you want to go over there or over there or spin up a group or whatever. Um, and so ideally, in order to to gain uh, traction with the ITF, uh, it's important to show that there's uh, interest that goes beyond a few people. And so, yeah, the idea the idea of that thread that uh, Manu Sporni started um, was to show that uh, there's more than one person interested in multi-formats and ideally more than one context in which they they are relevant. Um, yep, yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, I, I can try to answer questions, but I, I you know, the ITF is, is its own dark arcane area. So it's a, I can only help so much. I, I really appreciate the context, Robin. It was mainly just because, you know, Lionel has just brought up a concern around governance of this table. And there's a concurrent project that obviously is much more long-term, but is structured around the governance of that table, <laughs> more or less. And so I think it's really relevant context to have, even if it's you know, an idea and not necessarily um, a thing that's that's like definitely happening tomorrow type thing. Because uh, right. um, like we could, Lytle, we could be putting energy into calcifying what we mean by ratified and the names, and that may help the process and the, and the efforts with the ITF because we would, you know, we'd, we'd have to be open and amenable to that being discussed and rehashed, which I think is a, a good thing. But um, the more we have our ducks in a row, I think it's helpful. Yeah, and I, I I would certainly not want to sort of like forklift that table and bring it to the ITF and say all these things are standard. Let's just like assume this is this way forever. If we can avoid that, it would it would be wonderful. Uh, and and if we can use the ITF as a moment at which we say, hang on, let's clean up the 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 the, the registry we have. Um, it it could also be a a, a good idea. Uh, one of the things that I have been meaning to dig into is um, for HTTP headers um, and a number of other things like that. Uh, I N uh, um, values for, for, for some other parameters. Um, there's actually an existing uh, process um, that's uh, PR based on GitHub, pretty straightforward. Uh, where you can declare new values and they get reviewed and 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 potentially accepted. And if we could basically piggyback on on top of the existing tooling and system they have, it it might just be the the most simpler sim simple thing we can do. And I assume if it works for HTTP headers, it should work for multi formats. Yeah, there's like even more. They have uh, cyber tags. There's like a bunch of like enum types of things. Yeah, uh, at uh, IANA. Uh, so, um, and I think in the uh, uh, ITF thread uh, I linked in, in the notes, uh, uh, it was kind of like the first question uh, should, like, is the plan to be like leveraging existing bodies like IANA for uh, governance of the table? So, like, Laila, I think you're one of the people closest to this aware thanks for surfacing the problems do you have thoughts on what you would like to see us do I, I got like two quick thoughts one we should be very clear that only numbers are kind of like squatted and you should not trust the names uh, we had that discussion within like kubo implementers around like things like quick protocol or you know uh IPFS, the meaning of slash IPFS and uh, slash P2P also changed. Um, so uh, making it very clear to implementers that only numbers are ossified and the they should never like trust the, the names. And another thing would be- and, and Just real quick, Lytle, is this, a, is this a note at the top of that file? Is that a note in the readme of the repo? I, I don't know both. Okay. This, is, this is a this is a normative document around the governance. I, I in my mind, we need to say this is what this table means and does, and, and formalize that would be my yeah. suggestion. Yeah, and also like second one is uh, 
maybe make it harder to add stuff to the table before we figure out the home for it. We already have like things that we are not comfortable and you ask to different people, they will say that about different point at different things, but consensus is like, there are things which maybe not should not be there and making it harder to modify the table. Uh, maybe even like say that it's like a moratorium or adding new codes or whatever uh, before we figure out governance that maybe postpone the potential damage that lack of governance may create. Because, you know, people, this is like a very important, this is more important than CIDs. <laughs> so it, 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 it's really yeah, something we need to figure out. Those are like my two, two thoughts. One, make sure people don't rely on strings. And second one, maybe like freeze or have like provisional policy about make, making decisions that, oh, maybe this group, if you want to add new code, maybe you should come to this group, kind of like you go through the IPIP process. I'm not saying we should like apply IPIP process to this, you know, but kind of like you should, it should be discussed here instead of just, you know, uh, whoever has time to review pull request on GitHub and has uh, merge rights, right? What's the what's the reason we wouldn't do the name thing the other way and say that names shouldn't change? Uh, so that's a good that's a, that's a valid question. I, uh, like I, at the beginning, I said like my understanding of the table was that it was created to ensure that the the in the binary form that's sent on over the wire, the numeric codes have uh, there, there are no two num codes that means the same thing, um, or the same code is reused. So it's kind of like the number is the so the, the important part. Uh, Should we just remove the name then? I, I, well, guess I mean, it, then you don't know what it does. I mean, you know, I mean it, it has a description there. Like if it's in the description that that implies that like this is a human readable thing. You don't need to worry about it changing or whatever, right? But a name column with like a structure and even the documentation says parse the name if you want to know details like don't parse yeah. the name because they changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, guess, another thing to do is reach out to like library implementers and discourage them from using, from actually providing methods that map strings, right? Uh, we did, yeah, I the, mean, the like, names are super useful, that. which is why people use them. Uh, yeah, no, I would totally. like to see them just not change personally. Yeah. yeah, for any language that supports enums, this is like, like numeric based enums, this is less of an issue, but anything that actually does string representations, it's for your own in and nightmares. Yeah. It's a good question, I guess. Um, I'm a little cognizant of time, so let's yeah. reserve another two minutes for this and then close Yes, yeah, so I guess who, who, who's going to own like doing some of these steps? I mean, I, I think Rod historically, I think has kind of raised his hand to maybe want to help here. I think we had some discussion six months, a year ago, and I, I know he tends to have a lot of involvement around multi-formats. Um, Obviously, he has a lot of governance uh, experience as well. I, again, he's not here. I can't can't speak for him. Like, I, I just want to make sure we take some action from this. If it's someone on this call wants to get things going, great. If no one's going to do it and they want to see if they can offload it to Rod, that's good. But I just want to make sure we do something here. I can. I mean, I you know, with the proviso that I'm still ramping up. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my third week here. Um, I, I, I can, I can definitely try to, at the very least, help and and start spinning up um, a, a governance process and some some cleaning up operations um, on the assumption that I can pick people's brains um, for support. Yeah, I think I think that'd be great, Robin. We'd really appreciate that, and a, probably a good way to get a you know a quick impactful win here. I, I'm sure folks like if you tag folks like Lytle and Rod for sure. I'm you know maybe Brendan will be how to gauge, but I think people. If, if you can be in charge of owning it, I'm sure others will come alongside you to get it across the line and give you the reviews. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. All right, thanks, Robin. Sh should, should we freeze the table until we have a governance process for this? Yes. <laughs> okay, that could be an action it, item then. Encourage folks to use the user land defined codes. There are user land defined codes, people should use them. Like you don't need to get your stuff merged into the multi-codec table to define a multi-codec. <laughs> yeah, the concern I had was that like there is a breaking change made like a month ago to this table by two people who don't attend these meetings and aren't plugged into the implementer. Like, I don't know, I have a problem with that, like in the sense that like the process is not correct there. Uh, totally fair. And and I'm glad we're having this discussion for that reason or had. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the link, the links are uh, in in the notes if you want to like investigate specific cases. All the three examples are there. Thanks. And who can help Robin lock things down? Make sure. I mean, I think this is all through GitHub management, probably of reducing who has access. Uh, Glarg, probably, who does the admin mm -hmm. through programming of. Yeah. Yeah. Has, I also uh, seem to have permission, but I'm gone tomorrow. But next week I'm able to help. Yeah. So, so uh, Robin, I don't know if you've. I, I I don't think we've connected over Slack. Maybe if you want, Robin, if you can connect with me over Slack on Big Lep, and then I'll get you pointed to the right people so that you can learn how to put the brakes on things. Start yep. having cool. All right. Thanks. All right. We can move on. Good stuff. Pass. We're moving. All right, next up, I think is a PSA, unless someone else want to do this, I can take this uh, on the Move to Bytes working group. Does anybody, did anybody want to run lead on this? Considering I'm organizing it, I can talk about it. Cool. <laughs> for it. Uh, so uh, this is an announcement that we are having, forming a working group to define a new data transfer protocol. Uh, the idea here is to be cross organization and uh, sort of very pragmatic in shipping something that can take the place of bit swap long-term. Uh, that organ that working group is for its first meeting is uh, next Wednesday, and I will I drop a link in the meeting notes to it. There's a Luma community for it. if you search Move the Bytes Working Group Luma on the internet, you should find it. Hopefully, that can be a, a way that I can transmit with my voice the method by which you join this thing. Um, the current structure of that working group is 12 meetings, uh, culminating in ideally having something shipped to at least some number of implementations at the end of Q1, 2023. Um, the, <clears throat> this is, uh, and we are going to really try to facilitate a transition to a culture of measurement, right? And so that in our first meeting, we have test ground up and running. I, I've just been talking with our engineer at number zero, uh, Asner, who has the initial one-to-one -one and uh, tests of BitSwap. And I think GraphSync is landing as we speak, um, just to do baseline measurements. So each meeting will kick off with, Hey, here are the numbers. Here's the protocols that we're testing right now. Here are the user needs and how we're doing against those defined needs that we gathered at IPFS camp. And uh, can we continue to move forward on shipping something that improves the status quo? Uh, this is a great moment for, for uh, uh, supporting multiple protocols because we can just layer this kind of stuff on. And the big win as a community here is if we can coalesce around the smallest set of protocols that uh, multiple implementations can uh, put into production. Uh, so that's the goal. Uh, it's an aggressive schedule. A quarter to ship a new data transfer protocol is intense. <laughs> so we're looking to have this be very measurements-based, very pragmatic, um, and very uh, uh, focused on not including any new features. So we're not looking to do like privacy preserving stuff this go around. We're not looking to do um, any major things. We're just gonna measure around, hey, how fast and how, and how efficiently can we transfer um, DAX? Um, so if you had, if that's interesting to you, come check it out, join the community. It's a public call. Feel free to come join. Uh, the first presenter will be Brooke, uh, Brooklyn Zelenka from Vision talking about car sync. Um, ideally we may have some numbers, um, to show that's, we're currently working on that in the background. Um, and we'll have, ideally it, anybody can propose any data transfer protocol. So the idea here is if you have a thought for how to do this, right? Shock it in, we'll measure it and we'll just go by what works the best. And that's that's ideally how this will work. Um, how in scope that? is content routing? I mean, I think it is a content. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great question. Uh, <laughs> depends on how you define content routing, right? Because um, BitSwap and, plays a very critical role in content routing as well. Um, it does, right? And, and there are differing opinions here. And so the first thing, the thing that I'm hoping to do uh, this week is circulate. Uh, we actually gathered a bunch of use cases from interested organizations that have problems in data, both data transfer and content routing. Uh, and you'll notice even in the use cases an early preview of them needs to differ there. Uh, and so different solutions for different problems. Part of this is just really understanding the, the actual needed solution space now. Um, and so I can't directly answer your question, Gus, because okay. ideally, ideally a number of people, the... exactly. Let's yeah, talk about it next week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything on that? Two quick things, Brennan. Thank you. Awesome. Love the working group. Glad community is driving forward here. Uh, is sorry. Is there a link to the Luma in I the? Will... Okay, it's getting added. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't see it in the actual. 
um, discussion forum post. Oh no, I thought it's there. Daniel, I thought you posted something it's, about it. I thought... it it's, it's there, there. But it's not mentioned as Luma. It's just. Uh, oh yeah, it's just a link. But oh, it's... wow! For, sorry, for some reason my rendering like there's no, <laughs> there's no oh, underline or anything. anything. So I didn't. Oh. I wasn't now. Okay, now when I refresh, it looks good. Cool. Got it. Thank you. Sorry yeah. about that. No um, problem at all. And then. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know we don't have a dean here. I know he has pushed historically around like measuring this stuff to not talk about it. I don't think he ever got stuff merged, but we definitely have test plans that he has used for mm -hmm. trying different things out. So again, not that we have to use any of that prior art, but I just want to make sure people are aware that there is some prior art of test ground for measuring different data transport protocols. Yes. Uh, and actually, Asmir from our team is aware of a dean's work and cool. is picking up on it and building on it. Great. Just want to make sure it's known. Good stuff. Fantastic. Cool. Should we move on? Awesome. Uh, next up, we have IPIP corner. Uh, yeah, I, I moved them around because I got the two short ones, and then uh, there's kind of more open discussion uh, on the one Gus delegate uh, added. So Some juice. There, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the first one is just a uh, uh, information that uh, IPIP two hundred eighty-eight. Uh, TAR support for fetching uh, the Unix FS directories through gateways. Uh, the specification got merged and uh, working code uh, got merged and is scheduled uh, to be included in Kubo 17. Uh, RC1 will be probably next week. Um, so that's just quick information. That's uh, another IPIP that uh, we have a spec. We got the test vectors. We also fix potential security issue. Um, being proactive about them. It's not, you know, the, the position here often was like, oh, you know, people who fetch TARS should check them or be careful. At the same time, does gateway need to be, like we could do the due diligence with a very little uh, additional overhead. We were already like validating stuff. Um, so that's included in the IPAP. It's included in Kubo implementation. We have a security section in the IPAP. So it's mostly like a flag that, oh, if you want to take a look at how the process for a small change looked like, it's a good example, um, including test vectors. Uh, the second flag is uh, uh, Thibaut from Cloudflare opened uh, IPAP 298. Uh, it's a follow-up for the uh, allow deny lists discussion we had before. Uh, and it's based on our, we had like a, a hallway track workshop uh, around that pull request, like what changes do we want to make? And we made a, a progress. Uh, so there's additional Delta on top of that pull request and comments from that pull request. Uh, so if you are new to this uh, problem space, I think just uh, looking at the pull request uh, on this IPIP is uh, enough to get on board it. Uh, it's just a flag uh, for everyone interested to please review it and provide feedback. Uh, the Cloudflare's use case is uh, allow list uh, and deny list for their, their uh, clients. So it's mostly kind of like often HTTP centric, uh, HTTP gateway operator centric. However, uh, the idea is that this is like a single format, which we would use also for regular Kubo node who wants to subscribe to some lists published by like people detecting phishing and providing a list in this format or you know similar to uh, ad block lists maybe kubo node could detect that you are in changing countries and automatically enabling or disabling lists that protect you from any le legal liability in the specific country because you know that changes um, with that mindset it would be useful for people to uh, review that uh, and that's it uh, we can go to the next one. That's fantastic. My only uh, question on IPFP 298, uh, should we just auto slate it for consideration in two weeks? Um, Final, or is that is that too too close? I think it's too close uh, for the kind of like final vote, but I think it might be useful to maybe like have that as a, as a point for discussion, like what are the next steps for it? Um, okay. I think that's a great idea, just to make sure that Part of this, part of the purpose of this meeting is also just to make sure yeah, folks yeah. do their homework and actually read the specs. Yeah. The <laughs> nice thing about this is that it was like essentially like picked up by the community, folks from IPFS search, uh, Cloudflare. Uh, so it, this group uh, is very important to like keep the ball rolling, but it's not not just uh, us. Uh, we should just be responsive to uh, people there. 
Fantastic. I just think that leaves us room to talk about delegated content routing. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so the background here is that um, a, a lot of you are familiar with Reframe. I can give a quick summary of it. Reframe is a, a combination basically of two different things. Is a an RPC protocol, um, like a, a custom RPC protocol and a set of, of methods for doing delegated routing. Uh, which include content routing and other kinds of routing. Like I think there's name routing in it too, and possibly peer routing. Um, name routing, I'm talking about like IPNS resolution or IPNS records. But um, yeah, so the 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 main like use case driving this is indexer integration with uh, with IPFS implementations, so that uh, they can use indexers in addition to or instead of DHTs for uh, resolving CIDs, for finding providers for CIDs. And um, yeah, the, the the big change here is that, uh, or sorry, basically the, we as we were implementing Reframe, uh, there were like a number of issues that kept coming up and we discovered a mistake in the implementation that we shipped in Kubo uh, that would necessitate a backwards and compatible change to it. And so we took that opportunity to take a step back and rethink uh, whether we wanted to stick with what we had with Reframe or come up with a more like idiomatic HTTP API that would help implementers implement this more easily and integrate it with it more easily. So this proposal basically is an alternate. It's similar to Reframe, but it's it's more like a, like the goal of it is to try to keep it as idiomatic HTTP as possible. So that integration with it is easy and you don't have to write a huge framework or something in order to integrate with it. Um, yeah, that's basically the background of this. It's still a work in progress. I have a bunch of changes I need to make to it. Uh, and yeah. This is brilliant. This process is working. So you have a, how, I guess my first question to you is how, as the author, how do you want this considered and contrasted with reframe you brought up just like it's idiomatic http um which is a great start but like are there other things that as we're reading this document you think we should be sort of holding in our minds while we think about yes good question the so the reframe had a very broad goal right of providing some transport agnostic rpc framework um an rpc protocol this does not have that broad goal um which like the scope I've, I've tried to narrow the scope as much as possible because the reframe thing was dragging on and the complexity was really high because it was trying to do so much um and so i've i've like i've chopped out a lot of stuff from this that reframe supports that is not you know strictly necessary for the use cases we're trying to deliver right now um with the mind that like you know as long as we can add them later so like if there's issues with the spec where we that would prevent us from adding these later, then yeah, we should bring them up. But as long as like there's a path forward for all of the functionality that we want in the future, um, that's good enough. We don't need to solve all of them right now. But th I guess that would be the big thing about the approach this is taking versus reframe. So like specifically, this is like, for example, this is delegated content routing, not delegated routing. Um, so it's only like provider records, uh, it doesn't do the IPNS stuff. Um, we can add that later, we rename this to delegated routing if we want or whatever. Uh, but this focuses on two APIs, which is like find providers and put providers. Open it up for questions. Anybody have thoughts? Has anyone had a chance to read this yet? Probably um, really fresh. I, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, if you do read it, I would uh, not get bogged down in the details of it because they're going to be changing a lot. Um, most important is the motivation and the approach. Uh, yeah, so maybe like additional context is uh, the general routing story. Uh, depend, folks like watching this recording may not fully understand the the, the broader picture. So the broader picture is like there are different ways, uh, different types of routing we do. Um, the indexer story specifically uh, is doing uh, content routing plus peer routing. You ask for a CID and you not only get 
peer IDs of nodes that have it, but you also got the up-to-date multi-addresses where to find that peer. So I feel that's the important distinction because historically implementations like Kubo or maybe like if you think in the context of lip 2 p stack, lip 2 p uses DHT for peer routing. There's no content in lip 2 p Content is like layer on top of it. It's IP, how IPFS works. But for lip 2 p alone, uh, they only have peer routing. When they have no peer ID and you want to know where where what's the current address or current addresses of that peer. Um, so that's kind of like why the routing story is a bit wider than this. Uh, this is uh, addressing a specific need to find the content as soon as possible in a single round trip. For example, if you use Kubo and DHT, um, you ask who has the CID, you get peer ID back. You need to do additional lookup. Where can I, can I find that peer? Here, you have got a single round trip. So I think that's like important distinction. What's the value here? It's essentially like saving you those round trips, but it's like optimized for finding content. Uh, so maybe like wider question is uh, like, is it's for sure enough for this, this like indexer use case, but are maybe like this group, or maybe like IRO mobile, are there like use cases where you find need for delegating other types of routing than uh, just content, for example, Maybe I don't can uh, run full DHT on a mobile, but I would like to be able to discover peer address and connect to it directly. I just cannot like crowd DHT because that would drain my battery. Um, uh, so th those would be like additional questions I have. And uh, I, I've, in discussion I've had in Lisbon, it was often uh, um, Kind of like I, it, it was not part of maybe it was not a part of the discussion. Like what what's our story for delegating routing over something other than the HTTP? So I know it's the kind of like a tangent on the of this because this this is solving like one uh, kind of need when you can uh, ask over HTTP. However, I feel we may have this like wider story about. At some point, we may need to be able to delegate uh, routing over existing lip 2 p connections. For example, I'm a lip 2 p node. I already bootstrapped. I, I'm already connected to bootstrappers. Why do I need to send HTTP requests somewhere if I already have a connection to peers, right? Uh, or maybe like why, uh, like I'm, uh, I cannot trust the DNS for many reasons. Uh, why do I have to like send the request to this hard-coded endpoint? Uh, is there a way for me to uh, discover uh, public routers and delegate to them and then maybe like extract truth based on some quorum? Uh, priority is uh, limited relays. We have the P2P project has this concept. When you have a limited relay, you can use it for some time or some bandwidth. Um, so those are, I, I, this is just like a mapping the problem space uh, when you are uh, looking at this, figuring out uh, where this, this fits. If it's like limited to the content, finding content as fast as possible, it's perfect, like it's perfect. It's way simpler, it's way simpler to implement. Um, but maybe we need additional IPIPs for things I described, right? Non-HTTP. The reframe, I think the original Sino reframe was that it was trying to do too much. And the promise was uh, re really, really good there, but the, the, it takes time to deliver on that promise. And it may be, if at least uh, that's the current consensus I feel is that like, it may be easier to deliver smaller things to solve those parts of the routing picture. Uh, so that's like my mental model. I'm not sure if it's useful, but I feel yeah. it's yeah. useful to have it on this recording. That, that That's great, Lytle, really well said. Thank you for all the context and summarizing there. Um, I, I like some of the precision you were bringing around uh, routing in terms. Uh, I guess the one potential concern here is you, you differentiated between uh, content routing, basically find the peers that have a given CID, and then peer routing going from peer ID to multi adder. Um, in this, in uh, Gus's IPIP, we're calling it content routing, but it's mashing both of those things together, right? It's, it's a content plus uh, peer, and you get like both in the single round trip. Yeah, I, I get. I mean, I'm just wondering if we should give that a different 
term so that we can differentiate between so we can have precise language on these what sometimes is done as a two step you know now we're trying to do as a one step um because yeah to not convolute this I mean, maybe that's i guess i can raise that in the ipip itself but i, I like having pre precise terms here so that we can educate ourselves and, and the community about this stuff yeah yeah maybe we we can talk about it i, I think that like the the fact that their peer IDs and multi addresses getting returned are uh, specific to the bit swap transfer protocol. Um, and so you would consider that like, you know, a specific kind of like transfer protocol record. Uh, and like this, the, this, this API tries, like it has some well-known transfer protocols with schemas and stuff like that but like it's it's open-ended basically saying like oh you could just feed anything through this like it doesn't really take an opinion on the content of that stuff very much so i i don't think that that would i don't think that that should change like i don't think that, that distinction is important to make in the name of this ip ip but um maybe we could just call it delegated routing instead of de delegated content routing because i guess that does kind of maybe take a stance on that but did, okay. that, did that make sense yeah it makes sense uh, yeah okay. yeah i guess you don't need to hold up the it so it sounds like we don't have there there isn't already an agreed upon term for when you merge these two things together it generally gets called content routing but in historical ipfs kubo speak that was a thinner slice um and so maybe we need to come yeah. up or yeah, the the distinction between content and peer routing is only important in the context of like BitSwap or something where you're, you're giving someone back peer IDs and you don't know the address. I mean, uh, the distinction is also important for people who don't want to use IPFS but want to use LIP2P. Like LIP2P will not yeah. be, be able to leverage this protocol because there's no concept of peer routing. I'm not able to find, uh, you know, there's no endpoint for finding uh, addresses for peers. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I agree. Like, like language, language is tricky. Uh, maybe you know, maybe having like an explainer section of types of routing and show which part of the bigger picture this spec addresses may be better than trying okay. to figure find the name. Yeah, 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 a lot of that. Go ahead, Brendan. You had a. Yeah, I think I, I want to just highlight a couple of things in this discussion. Uh, one, this is kind of like an emerging thing. We've only really started to acquire the capacity to reason about this this way in the last year or two um, where we can like really have finally started to figure out how to cleave these things apart and talk about them independently um so uh big lap i think this is a great time to try and like like diving at that question i think is actually quite pertinent and so gus if you take a stab at diagramming that out i think it'd be a really useful practice in my mind content routing is the process like it's secretly the location-based part about, of our content address network, which is a very confusing thing to talk about, but content has to come from a location, even if it is content addressed. And, that, and so this is part of why content routing really, if we think about the, the definition broad terms, does need to include, um, it comes from the following peers. So like you do need everything that is in the, what the indexers provide and it, which is, equal to the set of things you get from the two round trips that DHT first defined, which peers have the given piece of content and the second to find the multi-addresses of those peers. Um, only at that point are you truly doing anything that you can reasonably call content routing, right? You have to be pointed at a thing you can dial to reasonably expect to get content. Um, adding some precision to the language as a subclause of the components of content routing would be a really useful exercise. I think that would and I think, Gus, you're really well positioned to do that. Um, so I, I look forward to reading about it. Um, <laughs> I'll take a stab at it. It's not in there yet, but I'll, I'll take yeah. the feedback to it. But I think it's, I think it's a really exciting thing. But I also like, that, you know, sometimes we just stand up as a community and say, "Hey, we're actually getting better at talking about this." And this is one of those moments, like where we are, we finally cleaved apart like data transfer, content routing. We're like starting to get these things spread out. My expectation is in like two year, three year time scales, they'll actually kind of start to come back together as new designs emerge, but um, let's save that for ourselves three years from now. Um, the, uh, what else was I gonna say about this? Um, I, I also just wanna applaud, um, Gus, your em emphasis on scope here. I think that um, one of the things that we're seeing as a broad observation is gaps between the spec and the implementation are really, really, really problematic. 
And it's really pernicious. It's really hard to do. And I think this is a problem that we're having and reconciling with as a group, as we start to get much more serious about specs, um, where you can, it's just blatantly obvious to me that Gus, what you're pr proposing will have a smaller gap between uh, <laughs> the spec and the implementation because it's centered around a protocol, right? The fact that it's just describing HCP and this and this specific set of use cases, it will be easier for us to implement that. And what I think is exciting is like in Iro, we have already implemented indexer resolution. Um, it'll come out in the next release. It would be very interesting to see how close what we do or what we currently have landed as code is to the spec that you're authoring and just understand, okay, cool. The gap, we, like it, how big is the gap to make a spec compliant because we're doing the same thing, but that, that may help for, inform a more reasonable discussion. Um, this pattern is emerging in a couple of places in our community where we're, I think we're starting to coalesce around the idea of smaller, more discrete specs that don't think so much about accommodating potential future use cases, but instead are oriented around known existing problem spaces that we can concretely discuss. I just want to highlight that the advantage of that is a smaller gap between the spec and the implementation. And that's really helpful now that we're starting to do interop testing, now that we're starting to like really have this Cambrian explosion, right? So uh, I applaud this move. I hope we see more stuff like this. Um, I think it makes our lives easier in the long run. Rant over. <laughs> Does anybody want the final word on this before we uh, move on? I don't know if it's the, the, the final word. I mean, there were some good questions here it says, I guess this was Lytle, Lytle prompts, you know, things about streaming responses, et cetera. Were these things to just make sure people think about and comment on in the IPIP? Okay. Yeah, it, it does not have to like cover all the use cases uh, other than the one Gus described, but we should have like the spec proposal should mention that what if we want to add this, how would we do it? So there's no... Uh, second guessing when we have to add it. Fantastic. Final words, going once. Done. Done. What's next? <laughs> next, we get to pick what we're going to talk about next week. It's the last thing on the, on the agenda that I have, unless others want to. Modify sorry, this I, I, sorry, I don't mean to, to just going going back here. Like in terms of moving forward, we all we want more feedback. And on the IPIP, I think a key thing is like getting groups outside of uh, PL Andres to give insight to it. You know, like other implementations, like Iro. Like uh, I guess is uh, will, will will this be something that your group is able to engage with Brendan to give feedback on? Like, would I think we want Pulse on would number zero adopt this? Um, we understand why you wouldn't adopt the original reframe, um, but I think that's really going to be really important for giving confidence here. And so I guess for timelines, is that something we could expect from you all in the next week? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the answer to that is yes. Um, definitely take, well, would the answer, okay, I should let me be specific. Would we adopt this? Uh, let's work together on the spec and get it to something that we would adopt. We we commit to engaging with that, uh, <laughs> The uh, uh, which I think is, is the healthy way to, to frame this. Uh, and then also, I, I, me signaling appreciation for something smaller and more concrete makes it a lot easier to commit to. And so it's a lot easier to say, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that because we already have something. And so if this is a conversation about just pulling that into alignment, that's great because it, it means that my you know, team of grumpy engineers and I will all go, ah, we want to change. We don't want to change that. Why do you want to change that? And then like, I think that's a really healthy, pragmatic dis discussion that is that will help um, move the spec forward in tandem with a set of changes. And so the things that I can concretely commit to is, uh, Gus, you and I can chat um, and I can uh, interpret the parts of our code base that currently do indexer resolution, because uh, I helped land that PR. And like, we, sh we should look at the gap between what you're proposing and what we're doing and see what the, what the patch would look like for our code base. Yep. My suspicion is I, it won't be that big. Yeah, I don't think it should be that big. Um, I'll, uh, I I'm going to make a pretty dramatic change to this so don't take a look at the details yet i'll reach out to you and please that's happened so that you don't waste your time amazing thank you oh my gosh yep. so i signal um <laughs> awesome uh we ready to move on big left do you feel like that gives you some like we're good thanks
Perfect. Thank you for drawing that to something actionable. I appreciate that nudge. <laughs> uh, cool. Let's talk about next IPs, IP IPs. Um, I, I don't think that we have anything like ready for the kind of like final vault yet. However, I wanted to flag work, ongoing work by Enric uh, on adding DAG, Cibora, and JSON support to gateways, like the full one. Um, and I'm flagging it because we, uh, and as we were doing that, we are identifying the implementation gaps around the Cibora support. So that's nice. Uh, but also, um, the Unexpected, unexpected consequences of adding support for like traversing Seaboard uh, documents, like you would traverse a directory trees, right? Uh, turns out the Seaboard tag 42, which means CID link to other Seaboard document, it could be like the top field in the Seaboard document, but it could be like somewhere deeper inside. You can have Seaboard objects inside of Seaboard. So that's how do you translate that to URLs? Well, now you have like fake directories, which are actually sub objects inside of a single uh, IPFS block. Um, I, I don't want to go too deep, but uh, folks who are like familiar with this problem space see how, how what, what problem we have. Like, okay, I'm able to traverse the DAG and get the final value, but what happens if I like remove the last segment from the path? This like fake directory, which is actually like sub object inside of the Cibor. Uh, is this something that we should like extract and return only this thing as a synthetic Cibor document, which is actually not as a block. It does not have its own CID, but at the same time, you know, on the root CID protects that. Um, should that be part of gateway spec? Uh, there are like some open questions and uh, my position kind of changed during uh, Lisbon week, as I talked with people more and more, I re like realized more and more how important the fact that regular Cibor works. The Cibor tag 42 has the special meaning. It links to other document, but that's it. That's all you need to actually like, build DAGs from Cibor documents. Uh, you could use DAG Cibor, which is a more strict subset of, the, of Cibor, uh, but you don't have to. Um, so I, I don't want to uh, mention which way I'm leaning. I just want, wanted to flag. Uh, this is interesting uh, and ongoing thing that probably next time we talk, it will be useful to get uh, more like uh, fleshed out uh, open questions, I guess. But uh, just flagging it so more people are aware we want to do this. Uh, and the usual uh, kind of like proverb is that it's easier to like add something than remove it once you ship it, once things ossify. So we need to be very careful about the scope of stuff that we expose on gateways. So that's just a very long flag I wanted to uh, put on, on this uh, topic, yeah. It's also far more possible to have circular references. Just saying we're used to the, we're used to the, the assumption of acyclic in, in our world and uh, it's less so. Uh, Henrik, do you have anything, do you, any context you'd like to add to this discussion? I think, you know, uh, the general sense I'm getting is maybe we don't have anything that needs to be considered for ratification, but our next meeting should actually be trying to move the ball forward on some of these things. And so it'd be great to get your setup uh, from this, Henrik. Yeah, I think on this uh, IPIP, it's basically done. We just need to actually make the decision about the paths and the traversing and then Done. The code is basically done. I just need to adjust whether or not we are going to support that thing. So if we get that decision done by next week, by this time, yes, we can. I think we can look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, my default would be to like, let's push to do to do that. If, 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 if we can like get the decision made so we could have meaningful review next week, because obviously not be great to get some of this kind of thing landed before the end of the year, because there's not many more of these meetings before you know, Christmas vacation happens and be a nice one to have in the 22 books. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, sorry, big lab. Uh, this, right, this question, this question really steps on a lot of groups concerns. Uh, and because that, and I think we should, I would actually suggest that we just write an IPIP that talks about 
this specific problem of dealing with nested links and how to how do we interpret this stuff? Because the interplanetary virtual machine project dramatically requires this. Any effort to do any WASM serialized anything is reliant on understanding how to interpret this kind of stuff. Uh, all of Filecoin has an opinion on this already, and we should ingest that opinion and, and have that adjacent to our work as we research this. This is a hard problem uh, that our team has some really strong opinions about. Actually, I don't know that I've met anybody who doesn't have a strong opinion about this one. <laughs> and, so it's, um, and so like, maybe one of the best things we could do is at bare minimum, just map the landscape of needs before the end of the year. I honestly think that would be massive progress on this topic uh, because there are lots of groups that really need an answer to this question. Um, and the gateway I think is a great, uh, is one use case of many. Um, and so if this group can help move that ball forward, I think it's a great, uh, that would be a great service to a number of projects um, that could have some clarity on like, hey, this is how we're gonna do this. This also has adjacencies to like the CID V2 fat pointer stuff, um, which I would push to some other conversation, but maybe we should okay. just reserve next meeting for like really trying to drill in on that. I'd be down. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for the context. And this is a much bigger thing. Okay, good. Good to know. Um, big, big, big landmine right here. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I, okay, I'm getting that sense. So, okay, so then I maybe I missed. It. So, what will we do to move forward on this landmine next in the next two weeks? Does anyone I need think, to do prep work? I think the best thing we could do is just try to enumerate the needs, and so that's uh, I, this is a, kind of just like run to ground work. Um, I think we should make a list of folks from IPVM. Uh, I, we can name the list of people, but and just gather their needs around this and basically try and get them pointed at what you have, uh, Enrique. I don't want to slow this down too much, um, but yeah, I think. I, I would also suggest maybe we can separate like the things, like Lido said, it's easier to just add things in the future than remove them. So we can just have any people to add it. So if it's like slash IPFS slash CID, it works with if there's any path after. We don't do anything. We just say 404, not found, whatever. So we can just, for specific CIDs without a path, we can just get the file, deck JSON, deck CIB or JSON CIB or whatever. Otherwise, do nothing and leave the pathing problem to a different EPIP and defer that decision. That feels far more productive than, than the rat's nest of, yeah. of like bureaucracy. We have implemented code and we can always, you know, yeah. find that open IP. Again. Yeah. But that would also set could... settle the like mime type of the response on the gateway, which should match what we already have. But like even just getting that calcified in the gateway oh, spec would be yeah, great. By the way, like uh, as a part of this uh, work Enrique is doing, we registered uh, uh, content Types. types for DAC, JSON, DAC, CBOR specifically. So you can now distinguish between regular JSON and regular CBOR and more strict variants we use for uh, more complex things. It's magic. <laughs> I'm just I love it. I personally think that that drop in scope, but I'm also like now just realizing like we don't want to even the larger conversation bog down too much in like trying to solve everybody's problems, but just want to make sure that we bring the right stakeholders to the table so that we don't get angry folks later. Maybe it's a buy. <laughs> Maybe there are two. So I can commit to reaching out to folks and saying, hey, let's pay attention to this and try and draw in the right parties that will have have an opinion and Enrique if you focus on having a the subset of things that no one's going to argue about whole CIDs with that pass we can get that ratified and keep the ball moving which would honestly would would put in place some like good stuff that is already happening in the wild and would give everybody a spec to coalesce around uh, also like kind of related there's this other IPIP by MOV uh 293 I've sent a link on uh, on the chat uh which is fleshing out, okay, Greenfield, we have a new IPLD namespace, how we would do pathing there without any like legacy that comes with Unix FS and IPFS pathing around files and directories. Uh, so it could be that maybe, you know, those more complex questions around uh, FVM and, and other stakeholders could be that, oh, maybe like existing namespace already does not support their use cases. Maybe we already are not able to talk about CID, fat pointer CIDs 
on this namespace and that's for this separate one so kind of like even getting a clarity that okay this is not in the scope of regular files and directories gateways which is useful like for websites or blocks and cars but this IPLD specific gateway uh, that even that would be very good to clarify that's much better I like that a lot thank you for raising that <laughs> um Cool. So we have some homework. I think so. Two weeks from now, is it cool with everyone if we have a bit more of a in the weeds conversation around uh, this and just like mapping the space and pulling out some use cases? Um, in the meantime, we have a bunch of to dos from this meeting in general. Big yeah, I, should, uh, I think two weeks from now is US Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, should we move to make this three weeks from now? I, I think so. So, All right, so I can that? I can take the action item to move move it around. So yeah, basically we'll get two more of these in the rest of the year. We'll get mm -hmm. one on the first December first, and one on December fifteenth. And at that point, then I'm sure people are, are going to be packing up for the holidays. Uh, we could. I, I think we. I'd love to meet in three weeks, see how it goes, and then see if there's appetite ah. to meet in four weeks. Like basically okay. just shift the next meeting by a week, and then. I think it's okay. really going to be dependent on, as as the year end approaches, folks get really busy, and so we'll, let's just see where we're at. But um, I'd love to propose that because there's some really important work happening here, and I my suspicion is if we have more of a working call, the next week we may be in a better position to like make some decisions and keep the ball moving. Um, maybe sorry to create more work for everyone. It's the same number of meetings. In all fairness, it's just you, we're going to have one meeting back to back weeks. Uh, sure. But, okay. Well, I'll move this one to the first. There, the, the next one to the first of December. Thank you very much. Cool. Well, two minutes past the hour. Anybody have any closing thoughts? Moments of Zen. Russ, I like your hoodie. You look comfortable. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate your time. I hope you have a lovely rest of Thursday. Take care. <laughs>